In the last video, we talked about the three major types of shock, uh, neurogenic shock and anaphylactic shock. And just to remind you that shock basically means systemic hyperperfusion. And the end result is hypotension, impaired tissue perfusion, and cellular hypoxia. So in this video, we're going to talk about septic um, shock and what that means. So septic shock is 25 to 50 percent mortality rate, so it's it's pretty hard to control. Ranks first among the causes of death in intensive care units in the ICU. ICU. Um, so it's a big problem, and it accounts for more than 200,000 deaths annually in the U.S. These stats are taken from Robin's Basic Pathology, Eighth Edition. And just so we can kind of get a better idea of what's going on, septic shock, about 70% of all cases of septic shock are caused by endotoxin producing gram negative bacilli. Now, these little buggers um, produce an endotoxin, and that's why it's called also endotoxic shock. And so, what is this endotoxin? Well, the majority of it is this thing right here, this L LPS, this lipopolysaccharide. And this lipopolysaccharide, and let me just scroll down here so you can kind of see the bottom of this. This is a gram positive, kind of the, here's the cellular membrane, here's the cytoplasm on this side. This is a gram positive bacilli and this is a gram negative and these are the difference. So on a gram positive they got a thicker peptidoglycan layer here and then on the gram negative they don't have it as thick but they have this kind of outer membrane, outer outer shell type thing. And this uh, gram negative has an LPS, lipopolysaccharide, and it is composed of a uh, lipid A, which is a kind of a toxic tail, if you will. And then they have a core saccharide. They just have core um, sugars linked together. And then they have, at the end, they have this O antigen. This O antigen is specific, specific for It's specific for different species. This O antigen um, end here is specific for different species. And so this this LPS, this lipopolysaccharide um, structure, is responsible. This and this is an endotoxin. It's responsible for producing this septic shock. And we're going to talk about how that is, how how it works, but. A gram negative is usually the the bacteria that that produces this, but also gram positive and fungi uh, analogous molecules can also elicit this uh, septic shock pathway. So these are the steps by which LPS, this lipo lipo polysaccharide tail on the gram negative bacteria elicit. A response and this this main response <clears throat> excuse me this main response is to help effectively the help the immune system effectively eradicate the bacteria so we're gonna kind of I'll kind of walk you through these and then I drew some pictures down here to help us kind of figure it out so the free LPS that's uh, in the circulatory system so it's right here attaches to a circulating LPS binding protein. So there's an LPS binding protein. These two come in and they attach. And then this attaches, then they attach to the CD4. This, or sorry, the CD14. So the, comp, the complex then binds to a specific receptor, the CD4 receptor, and that's on monocytes, macrophages, and neutrophils. Now these uh, monocytes, these cells, they go out and start trying to destroy the gram-negative bacteria. Then the CD4 
results in intracellular signaling via an associated toll-like receptor protein 4. So this toll-like receptor protein 4 then activates mononuclear cells. So these mononuclear cells then become activated. Mononuclear cells are lymphocytes, other cells. They are, they are now activated to continue the eradication of the, uh, the, the bacteria that is producing or the microbe that is producing this LP, LPS response. Also cytokines, it also increases cytokines and the mononuclear cells produce these cytokines along with other cells. The interleukin-1 and the tumor necrosis factor. Now these are uh, vasodilators, vascular they increase vascular permeability and they do much, they, they do a lot of other things. But these cytokines, they act on endothelial cells. So all these cells that may, that line the blood vessel, these endothelial cells, it, it causes them to reduce the synthesis of anticoagulation factors such as tissue factor pathway inhibitor and thrombomodulin. So in a nutshell, this LPS goes through several steps to activate the immune system to eradicate the involving uh, the the microbe, and so this TRL also the TRL mediated activation helps to trigger the innate the innate immune system to effectively eradicate the microbe. All this stuff was taken from all this information was taken from Robin's Basic Pathology Eighth Edition. So this is kind of low levels. This is what happens during low levels of LPS. When you have low levels of LPS, kind of this normal pathway that helps our immune system fight off these evading microbes. So what happens when we have moderate infection? When we jump up to kind of a moderate infection, and this infection can be systemic, this is an important thing to remember. It can either be systemic or it can be local. Because one, two. Because these bacteria, these gram negative bacteria, they secrete or you know they're they're chewed up or they emit this LPS. And it can be a systemic, which means it's circulating all over into your circulatory system, or it can be local, and then that local kind of comes into the circulatory system. But nonetheless, when you have a moderate infection and you have a higher levels or moderate levels of LPS, um, you have the augmentation of the cytokine ca cascade. You have cytokine induced secondary effectors like increased production of nitric oxide and platelet activating factor. And nitric oxide is a potent vasodilator and so you can kind of get a hint of what's going to happen because remember we talked about what causes shock and one of the things of, of the shock is decreased blood volume or hypoperfusion because of the increase the increased diameter or area of the blood vessel. So if you have massive nitric oxide release then you're going to have tons of vasodilation which will decrease your blood pressure and you're going to have plate activating factor which, oh, and then you have systemic effects of the tumor necrosis factor and the interleukin-1, which right here is the cytokines. You have a uh, fever, you get acute phase uh, proteins, and an increase of those, and increased circulating neutrophils, all in a response to try to help the body fight and get rid of the, the microbe that's causing the LPS. But if it's too severe, especially in this moderate case, then what happens is the endothelium turns to kind of a pro uh, pro blood clot state or pro coagulant state, and that can be definitely a problem. And finally, when you have a severe infection, you have a severe infection and you have high levels of LPS in the blood, you get systemic vasodilation from the nitric oxide and other things, and you get hypotension you get diminished myocardial contractility so the heart is not pumping and so you kinda can have a cardiogenic shock uh, this is more pointing towards that you have wise, widespread endothelial injury and activation uh, because of this these 
tumor necrosis factor, cytokines, interleukin-1, you have vasodilation, uh, vaso, uh, endothelial injury, activation, you can have systemic leukocyte adhesion and diffuse alveolar capillary damage in the lungs. And then you have activation of the coagulation system. So uh, in the moderate moderate stages or the moderate levels of LPS, you kind of have this endothelium turning towards a pro-coagulant state. Well, you can imagine if you just increase uh, the LPS, then truly the coagulation system is going to be going full bore, and then you have then it culminates in disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. And if you don't know what that is, you can look it up. We're going to talk about it later in our videos when we get to that section. But obviously this is all just leading up to what is known as septic shock. And this is kind of the pathway, the pathogenesis of the uh, septic shock. So we'll see you in the next video.